Father, Mother, God, I am here. What shall we share today? It's January 24th, 2021, and this is my new sun day. I covered a lot of ground in my prayer and dialogue time this morning. Beautiful insights as well as tears. Reflecting on this journey that I have been on and so many others on a conscious journey. Engaged Inquisitive, curious, willing to receive information, data that inspires not just my mind, but my entire body. data that helps me understand who I am and why I'm here and helps me to understand how this reversal in consciousness occurs. So many of us, I feel, are still looping with good intentions to help solve our inconsistencies, our bigger issues with humanity and the earth. The biggest issue being that humanity and the earth are out of sync. I've always been pointed to the root of things in these prayer dialogue times, my connecting time. If we go to the very root of our issues, the ones that show up in 3D, the foundational issue is that we are not in sync with our true nature. And no amount of, you know, band-aids and good intentions to fix and make life better for all, uh, none of this is ultimately going to bring us to this fruition point where we all feel reconnected and loved and we're all rich and creative and feel the full blessings. This doesn't happen in the outer world. Things can appear fixed or working again, but it's always temporary until we're ready with the courage and the conviction, the commitment to get to the root, to speak honestly out loud in this dialogue with your source. Call it out call these inconsistencies out, make it conscious, instead of jumping into 
the stagnant pool of human consciousness that believes it is separate from this river of love, of life, that for so long we have gone without. We may do with what was presented from the outer world. Our attention has been out there to try and make this work, to try and have beautiful lives within this and upon this false foundation. And some of us have been awakened to this foundational issue and are always evolving and in process with adapting to more of this grace. Now is the time to be who you are. I've been uh, working on a, a video and I'll probably publish that before before this comes out. But this video I I found from 2011. I had just sat in front of the camera and you know decided to record a transmission and so much here to share, but um, all the feelings came back, you know, from my body when I watched it. I had clearly turned the camera off and saved the file and buried it. I didn't know, as was often the case, I didn't know how to explain this aspect of my contact and then what was happening to me in these connections. Because as far as I knew, I was the only one experiencing this on the planet. And if others were experiencing it, they certainly were not talking about it. I'm just so grateful that I did not delete that file, as I have done many times. And I regret that, that I that I didn't just save it and come back to it later, like in this case almost 10 years later, viewing that video. There were very few videos done. I was so shy about all of it, especially with the way that I would connect. And I used to make all these sounds and, you know, um, not only tones you know, harmonic tones, but just this, these foreign words and clicks and, you know, it was just like all over the place. And, and, and it was just coming through me. And, and I had decided that <laughs> this would create even more distance between myself and other And I had already created so much distance just with the little bit, you know, that I was sharing over the years, you know, and blogging. And um, I always found, found it to be safe because nobody was interested. And I still find safety in that today. Nobody's interested in this. It's not a popular thing so I can just keep sharing (laughs) and make record of it and then 
eventually I won't be here and maybe something that I've shared, you know, of the maps of this journey over my lifetime, maybe some of it will have value to someone someday. Even if it's just a, oh, thank you, that helps me understand this and now I can go in that direction, you know. Even if it's subtle is, is what I'm saying. While I have found through my conversations with other experiencers over the years, I have found joy. Together we have found great joy in, you know, trying to begin to articulate how our contact was very, very different from what is being presented from the outer world. So again, I, I've spoken of this many times in a variety of formats. When we have, you know, an original uh, experience that arrives in our lives as a gift to help us remember our original source and our original self. You know, I wrote about this in my book and I've talked about it often. We look to the outer world. Who else is experiencing this? What's happening? And then we find the narrative and we go, well, okay, it's sort of like that, maybe some of it, but oh my God, they're talking about contact too. <laughs> and so the tendency is to um, begin to reduce the experience and reduce ourselves to fit into this place where we can still survive. We can agree with the whole ball of wax so that we find a place to fit because it's too scary to not fit in this place. And that's been the journey of my life is, is facing the scary of not fitting. And I don't know where it's going. I never know. I don't, I'll start to make a plan about how, you know, well, let's build this platform and let's do this and let's do that. You know, that's the one coming in from the world, the one that was born here that, that's saying, you know, we really should, um, you know, build this platform. And, you know, I made changes to my website, but uh, I haven't followed through. Um, I don't follow through anymore with anything that does not come from that pure inspiration. And then I find myself just doing it and being it. I do not go outside of the river anymore to construct something unless the river takes me there. So I've had people contact me asking about, you know, groups and, and when. And, and I'm, I feel like I'm getting closer to this. Um, but I have to be in sync 100% with that which informs me. I will not divert from that just so I can have a, uh, a platform in the world. It, it's going to happen. It's just, it's just that I... I have to start off on, you know, my footing needs to feel and be 100% connected to the heart of heaven and the heart of earth. I need to be in integrity with that, first and foremost. But this morning when I was connecting, I was getting more feeling visions of what the work is, and, and it has shown me over the course of, I would say, more than 20 years, you know, visions of my work, my service, and when I would have dreams or visions of it, 
back then, it, it was just so strange and far away and well, I don't know what that was, but it was cool, but that's not me. <laughs> and a bridge to not me, but but this I am. And and flip this reality onto its true foundation, onto its universal foundation. And and that had to happen in me. And I was guided through the whole thing. And all I want to do is share that with you. But I... I have come to detest marketing and advertising and commerce and grabbing your attention and funneling you into a machine and and this is not in judgment of anyone else and what they have created and that they have to do there is no right or wrong here there's only am i in in integrity with this greater self and how i extend myself here and you know it might be that that i you know, eventually hire people to help me because I'm completely overwhelmed with everything that I do. Moon and Gemini trying to just wear every hat and do and be everything and and there's only so much of me. So it could be that I create a machine and make myself available on a platform such as that. Um, but right now I'm still in the mode of I want to be visible, but I don't want to be visible. <laughs> so there's this split of, you know, uh, you know that, that determination that I am not going back into that world. I'm expanding. So what does this work and service look like in the new world, in the new sun? As the Maya say, the, this is the time of the new sun. And so it's important that we're listening and we're watching and we're in check with our inner self, our divine self. Are we tethered to that and listening to that as we move forward? Because that's where the inspiration comes to to be who we are and extend ourselves into our physical reality. And we work in harmony within ourselves and then in harmony with others around us. But we can't work in harmony with others around us unless we are in that harmony ourselves directly. And that does bring us back to the foundation. Are we set are we rooted in the foundation of the universal, the divine, when we extend ourselves here, when we speak? The part of my experiences over my lifetime that I tried to talk about, but I couldn't, nobody resonated with it or they thought it was weird. And so I just eventually, you know, it's like this is the biggest thing the most magical, amazing, wonderful thing that was coming out of these contact experiences. And, and, and there was nobody I could talk to. And in, in the opening slate on this video that I'm going to share, you know, I, brief as it may be, that I feel the contact was about changing me changing my body, perhaps changing my DNA. I don't know. All I know is what it feels like on the inside when these kinds of experiences would happen. It sometimes was associated with um, some memory upon awakening that I was being worked on. I was on a table um, it was very lucid, and I was being communicated to through um, 
you know, what people call telepathy. I just call it feeling, knowing. And, and it was always, you know, it was for, for me, it was for my benefit. It was healing. Uh, I had many healings like that over the years. And then either during, immediately following the experience, or in the, in the days after, like I'd, I'd wake up in my bed with this enormous amount of energy flowing through me, like, oh my God, what's happening? And, and then I would just allow it to move through me, you know, at a certain point when I realized this, okay, this is good. This is, I don't have to be afraid. I know because, you know, they or I was informed by the energy itself that this was helping me, you know, be who I am. And so what would happen eventually is, is the energy would shoot through me and my back would arch up and I would just be in this um, I mean, it was like 10,000 volts <laughs> um, of electricity, but it was also very magnetic. So I want to use the analogy of electricity for being, you know, shocked in a way. But so, you know, electromagnetic, it was, it was both. Uh, there's always that presence of, of magnetic energy that is that that holds you in place that's like um i don't know it's very loving and anchoring that magnetic energy which is what i work with um to this day so this is this was the component of my contact experiences that you know, I, I don't even know if I, yeah, I probably mentioned it in the book. It's so hard for me to remember. That's why I wrote the book, because the uh, data that was coming to me um, was, okay, all this money suddenly arrived in my life, and, and it was like, okay, now write the book, because this is going to fade. You're You're just not going to have this kind of connection to this life, this uh, identity, I should say. We know what we need to know when we need to know it. We're not trying to prove anything to the old reality, I guess is a way to say it. <laughs> I'm aware that I get passionate and I hop all over the place in a non-linear way and hopefully I go back and find those threads that I started <laughs> and complete them. I've been trying to tell you about this video the whole time. I wanted to show at the time in 2011 what my process was for connecting to this presence and even I wanted to see what it looked like, you know, watching it later. I never watched it afterwards. I very rarely even listened to messages I brought through until years later because I didn't know what to do with them. And then I found out at a certain point that they were relevant and they were correct in that it was important to restore our natural state, our natural consciousness, our original consciousness, um, because of this intersection that we would be coming to. So the video itself, it has uh, excerpts from the transmission, the message itself, but I find that less interesting than the process that I would go through to make this connection. 
And then what happens in my body, how my body responds. And what I'm talking about is, is ecstasy. I'm talking about full body orgasmic experience when this energy joins with me. Now, that doesn't occur so much now because I have integrated. I'm in harmony with it. When we're introduced to it, and then this is spoken of in the message itself, I've been adapted to these energies over the course of my life because, as it pointed out in the message, it, it'll fry you. It, it will, you know, if you're not ready for it, it's not good. And so to be ready for it is what I, you know, was inspired to help people with. And though what I found was that I was not visible and my voice and what I was saying made, you know, it, we weren't visible in the world. And then, of course, this creates all kinds of <laughs> lessons for me on my spiritual journey of, well, nobody wants to hear it, so I'm um, irrelevant. And so, you know, what am I doing here? Why do I keep doing this? And, and there are very close friends in my life that can attest to this, that I, it was a hard, hard, hard life in this way, that I wanted to be true to the frequencies of what I was feeling in my body and what it was saying to me and how it was informing me. But I could not explain it. And, and then... If I tried, whether it was with this um, experience itself or with another kind of, you know, just trying to communicate about experiences, mystical ones of a variety, in a variety of forms, and then getting either get, getting the glazed eyes, um, you know, watching the fear come into the body, watching the defenses arrive to fight this thing that wants to, you know, the ego interprets it as you, you're here to destroy my world. So, you know, I have defenses in place for this nonsense that you're speaking. And then sometimes people would say, that's interesting. Um, I can relate to that in not the same way, but sort of like this, you know. And, and then those little little tidbits would just like fill me with joy that I wasn't completely insane. <laughs> Do you know the only reason that I share all of this is because this isn't about me, it's about all of us? Otherwise, for sure, I would not make this public because... <laughs> There's no reward of a worldly nature to do this and to have been doing it over the years in my own way. I'm just trying to tell people what they're connected to. That's all. That's one of the first thoughts I had after my 1998 full-body bioenergetic kundalini koyopa experience, is I, I will dedicate my entire life to letting people know what they're connected to. Whether they're interested or not, I'll somehow make it available. So if they should become interested, it's all over the internet. So the trick here in this reality is, you know, basically that we think, whether, whether we intellectually deny it or not, we 
sink and defer to this reality, this world, as real, as the real world. It is not the real world. It is a construct that we are, we're just trapped in our projections. We're trapped in language. We're trapped in concepts. We keep looping inside of this. And, and even, I've even spoken to experiencers that acknowledge this, but eventually slipped back into, well, you know, what are you going to do? You got to go where you can be visible, you know, so we can make money and we can survive. Hey, I get it. That has been the biggest issue in my life. And just trying to find ways to survive and not go insane with this introduction of new data from outside this construct. But what the presence informed me of was, you know, just trust. Attune to this. Be this. Strengthen this. No matter what the reaction is in your world. Follow this. Be this light as best you can be in any given moment. And you will continue to find yourself being pulled into more light and more light and more light. And if anything can be called an ascension, it would be that. But as this presence has been sharing through me, through these verbal transmissions, this is something that you must commit to. You must be consciously engaged with. And that requires, initially, you, you use your will to, to recommit to your divine nature, recommit to the truth of who you actually are. What we have been living within is a repetitive, looping sense of self and community. Self and other is trapped inside of this smaller experience. Obviously, we don't have enough of a collective that realizes this. So it is perpetuated simply by unconsciously participating in it. And, you know, there, there are a variety of layers of this. You know, those who, who call it out and say, look what they're doing to us. This is important. I mean, it's a phase of, of our release. It's we're sharing from our view what we're, what we're learning and understanding. That's really all I'm doing, too. But don't stop there. Don't, don't stay looping in that, um, you know, you're the soldier and you're, you're pointing this out. You're, you're a warrior, and you are, call, you know, you're calling out, you know, the control and the manipulation, the conditioning, and you take a stand inside the construct, and you say, this isn't right, and, and you are correct. <laughs> it isn't right. I don't know all the history and the stories, and, and that's other people's passions um, to share these things. All I know is that I found a connection out and through this construct, through this smaller containment. And I see, I see and feel my connection, my power with this source frequency with a universal field rather than this smaller field, if you will. So 
there's these outer territories, you know, before you get to the skin of the sphere, the bubble. And, and, you know, it's, I see, you know, those who want to call out the truth here within the sphere, within the bubble, um, as important, because it's like people need to know, they need to see the contrast, like my, my heart um, is in full support of your courage to call out that which is shadow, evil. But I also want to encourage you to reconnect with your divine nature and speak from that ground, that footing, because that's where your power is. And so, yes, call it out. And now what? Right? Um, People are in a very deep sleep. They are hypnotized. They are under a spell. Where does it go? How is it resolved in this bubble that considers itself separate from source? It doesn't get resolved inside that bubble. It gets resolved when the bubble breaks. And we are all reconnected to that light that we are, our original state, how we were designed to be. And somehow, and I'm sure people have many theories, somehow we agreed to be less. We agreed to shut off our feeling nature, to shut off the core that informs us to shut off our instinct, our intuition. We were all told in one way, shape, or form how bad that was. We don't have to go into the level of the stories of, of where this all began and who's responsible. And, you know, that just sucks you back into the polarization. Just recommit to being more and more and more and more until you are all once again. And you are connected to that network rather than the one you have been trapped within and looping within. I do not speak from anything I have read, I might refer to something that I read. I might bring that in to, the, to this dialogue. But ultimately, I speak from the universal. I speak from this network of light that I have found myself within on a consistent enough basis that I can, I can now speak of it and I can now say that is where I landed back into myself. And it is still my, my commitment on a daily and sometimes moment by moment basis that I remain aware of this. Because I, even at this day, in this moment, this time, I can observe, oh, look at, I slipped back into that. You know, it's usually, a, I would say at this point, it's, it's mild stuff, but still it's, and I find delight in it. Like, oh, look at that. It wanted to pull me back in. But that's so far away now, that way of framing myself and my life to fit into the construct, to create an identity that, that can thrive within the construct rather than thrive with all that you are, the universal, your multidimensional design. Why cut yourself off from that just because you're afraid of the unknown? Your fear of the unknown keeps you consistently trapped and looping in the known. 
So uh, I am still committed to share and speak in this way to reach you. Because I made a commitment after I felt all of that come together within me. That wasn't, you know, and I referred to 1998 um, bioenergetic event that brought these pieces of me back together again. This sense of uh, awareness of I am in form. And it's not the end. There is no poof, I'm enlightened and, you know, I, 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 I won a trophy. It's ongoing. It is always expanding. It is always evolving. So the key is to have that doorway open, that communion to be active, our consciousness dedicating and committing enough presence. I wanted to say time, but it's, it's just really presence, present moment conversations, dialogues that keep us consistently in dialogue with that which is available, the divine, to re-inform us, remind us of who we, who we are. And I continue to overcome fear. Even with this awareness in my body of this connection. I'm grateful to the friends that I have met, you know, through the contacty experiencer groups, forums, of which I am no longer a part. But I have, I followed through with my divine inspiration to find the ones like me because I was continuously informed that there were many like me and they're in a variety of stages of awareness of it. Even if you are given this gift of, you know, a wake-up call in this form or other forms. Um, It doesn't mean you're awake. It means that you received a gift to snap you out of it and wake you up from the spell, to wake you up out of zombie land. It's up to you and, 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 and the activation of your own will to swim forward up and out of this stagnant pool that is not growing it is only looping so again nothing is resolved on on that in this construct it will continuously loop now It will take new forms. It will go in different directions of, you know, what can we do now with this trapped human consciousness? And this is, you know, what uh, I understand more now of the visions and, and what I was being shown about where this construct is going next. And, and I did have some confusion for a while, like, whoa, what can I do about that, you know? And it's like, nothing. All you can do is be and do you and demonstrate what you have come to know. Have the courage to be it. And not apologize for it, which took me many years. To accept it and not apologize because 
It requires. It requires great courage to be an original when you don't see it reflected anywhere or very few places. You might get glimpses, but I did get glimpses from these other experiences that I have spoken to. And I thank you for those dialogues that showed me the next, gave me the courage to go to the next rung of the ladder. You know, we compare notes and we receive, if we're actively engaged, we're receiving similar data. It is a constantly evolving, expanding process. It is not about taking this data that happened in, in that instance or those instances and, and then, you know, create something, create an identity or a piece of artwork that makes the statement, that symbolizes it in this world. That's great, but keep going, keep expanding, keep engaging Leave the story. That's what I'm saying to experiencers now. Leave the story. Don't get trapped in those narratives that circle the perimeter of this place. And, and, and those narratives are there just, just to go, okay, is this what you mean? Oh, welcome. Yes, we will you know, help you and support you because you are a voice for this. And, but you're, you're, now you're, you're looping inside of someone else's narrative and making it your own. You know, I fell for that. Not for very long, but, but, but I can see how seductive it is. It doesn't matter what we call it, what we name it how we sort it out in our minds so that it fits into what exists now as well as a historical timeline and it all has to make sense in a linear fashion, that's bullshit. It doesn't. What I want to introduce to you is this liquid light that lights us up from within and informs us. The light, original light source, creator, doesn't have a name. Because ultimately, when you feel it, you go, oh, silly me, I thought I needed to name it. I thought it... I thought there were names and characters, and I thought there was name, rank, and file, you know, throughout this... throughout the heavens... But you know what? I'm here to break the bubble. And there are others doing the same in their own way. When you feel this, when you commit on a regular basis to to just this practice of honesty and innocence, you know, forging your own way, your own way of praying, your own practice of the presence. And when you feel it, it changes you. And, and you get a taste of, of what it's like to reverse this whole thing, to leave the foundation of, of the construct and to feel this connection with the foundation of all way beyond that tiny little bubble that we've been looping in. Then when you start to find consistency with that which you are, you can become a channel for it. And you can help break the bubble too. With enough of us standing on the foundation of the truth, that's how it happens. It doesn't happen on the level of, look how horrible this is. This, this, this is what evil does in our little bubble. Yeah, it's what evil does in the little bubble. Get over it, literally. And you will have a much 
stronger anchoring, a much stronger voice, simply by being it, I have great and consistent joy and optimism in my life. And I live very simply. I don't need much. I need my close friends. I need my my family here on earth. I'm so grateful for the people that have arrived in my life where I can be fully who I am. And they're not horrified. (laughs) Even if they don't always understand what I'm saying, they feel it. And they're not trusting in me, Eileen, or M. They begin to trust in that frequency that I, I just radiate when I speak of it. And this has been an extraordinary life. And I'm so grateful to have had the opportunity to uncover, to discover what is true. Anchored in frequency, not anchored in that very tiny, tiny reality with all of its compartments, with all of its fascination, with the mechanics. It's time to go big. And it's a dance. Like I was saying about the the ecstatic states, it's really big at first. It's like, oh my God, can I even handle this? And you think it's going to kill you because it's it's frequency from beyond what, what we adapted to here. And it'll change you if you allow it to. I have visions of what I want to do and how I'd like to share it in a bigger way. But I can't do it all. And I'm, so I'm at this place now where I realize, I mean, I love every day of my life. I just love waking up. I just love like, oh, goody, what do we get to do now? How can we share this and express this now? And in what form? And like I said before, I, there's so many things I love to do that I'm, I, I find myself being spread so thin because I'm trying to do it all. I'm used to doing it all. So I'm having to learn to um, allow uh, this to shift and change so that I can really go deep and allow this presence to come through. And if I'm having to think about technology at the same time that I want to go deep, it's, it doesn't work. I can't, I can't be the technologist, you know, and the, the voice. Maybe at some point that's possible, but right now I'm, I'm not at that. Like I can, I can kind of half-ass it. You know, that's what, um, you know, Moon and Gemini, we can spread ourselves thin and and not, you know, actually do any one thing fabulously because we're spread so thin. I'd like to be freed up to, to follow through with the earlier visions from years ago. Time is such an illusion in this bubble, inside this bubble. It's... It comes back in when it's time for it to come back in. If I say I'm ready for that, then then it'll all come together. It will coalesce. It will manifest. And I, I just want to thank the few people who are listening to what I share and to my mentoring students, clients that I have been working with. It's... It's really such a, an incredibly joyful life at this 
now moment and and yet i realize i'd like to i'd like to make myself available to share more and i'll leave it at that i have been doing this dance of well how do i be visible here you know and so it's a it's a compromise it's been a constant compromise to and 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 that wasn't wrong it's just that that phase is over i i need to fully be here and share more even though it may only be a few people who who feel the call or the the engagement with it with the the simultaneous commitment to the self and commitment to opening to this grace and 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 the discovery that it is the same i love this i have a big smile on my face because i love this and i'm excited about sharing this and more with you thanks for being with me on this journey my love to you